this is a big lesson because in this lesson you will be learning how to press keys and make things happen on the screen. Now you got to think of how big that is. Right now we've just learned how to like make our mouse do things on the screen. We're holding now we got so many more options. We got the whole keyboard to use. So the point of this lesson is how can we press a key and make something happen on the screen? Now we're just going to be focusing on a small thing, which is how can we just make the color change on the screen, the color of a shape change, right? But think about this. Consider everything we've learned. Consider all the things you can do to make things change on the screen. I'm going to show you how to change the color, but that doesn't mean you can't make things go up or down, left or right, get bigger or smaller, all change, you know, whatever. Any you you have to be imaginative with this skill. All I'm showing is how to change the color, but there's so much you can do now. So without further ado, let's get into it. So basically, I'm just going to start with a boring old circle. So we're going to start with our circle. It's going to be a, a little boring white circle. So it's going to be ellipse, 200, 100, 200, 100, 100. Here's our circle. All right, nothing crazy. Not the coolest thing you've ever seen. Probably not like, whoa, what a great circle. But what I'm going to show you is how if you want to press the A key, you can make it change to a different color. So check it out. Now, just like before, we're going to put our if statement in between the original fill and the shape. Okay, we're going to say this if, and here's what we're going to learn. We're going to type something called key is pressed. See how it highlights if you type it in right? Remember, it's a capital I, capital P, key, that K is lowercase. So it turns pink or violet if you do it right. All right, that's what you're putting in your parentheses. Now you might be saying like, what does that do? What this does is P5 just tells, it's detecting if the user is pressing the keyboard or not. So if you are pressing the keyboard, this is gonna say true. If you're not, it'll say false. If you don't believe me, I could actually even show that to you by doing this. Text key is pressed, all right? And let's put 2020. So now over here, you can see what's happening. So you see where it's, you know, let's make this, let's do fill uh, zero so you can actually see it. So you see where it says false right here? All right, now once if I press my key out, you, I just want to see, I'm going to go press the A key. It says true, right? So I can press any key, space bar, up, down. You see how that turns to true? So what that's doing is just the detector to see, is the user pressing the keyboard, right? So that's what this does right here. P5 built that for us. So remember, this is just saying if, this is true or false. If they are pressing the keyboard, do something. If they are not pressing the keyboard, don't do something. So a basic version of this is if I wanted to turn this blue, I would just do this, blue, right? So check it out. I can press the keyboard. You're gonna watch. So I'm gonna press anywhere on the keyboard, it turns blue and then turns back, right? So now I have it. So if I press anything on the keyboard, it's turning blue. Cool, right? Because it's saying if a key, oop, if any key is being pressed, execute this action. If it's not being pressed, if it's false, don't execute it. Now, once if I want to do a specific key, because it's kind of boring if it, like all the key, like I'm just looking for any key, once if I want it to only happen if I press the A key. Well, here's what we would do. You add another if statement inside this if statement, all right? So we're gonna look for a more specific key. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm just going to delete this for a second. So inside of this if statement, we're going to add a second if statement. All right. And we're going to say key is equal to, and which key do we want? A. Now, before I move on, I just want to be clear here. Key actually is like which specific key is being pressed. All right. So once again, I'm going to just change this. You see where it says key is pressed. Let's just change that to key. All right. So if I press this, oh, and let me add my curly braces. So nothing's happening yet. I didn't do anything, but I just want to show everyone what key is. So look up here. So you see up here, nothing's there. When I press a key, you see how it, I press B, C. This tells me what key is being pressed. So this keyword right here, it's saying what key is being pressed, okay? Then I use a double equal sign. This is important. If you want to evaluate if two things are the same, you use a double equal sign. That's when you want to do a comparison. All right, double equal sign is compare to see if the key is the same as the letter A. When we use a single equal sign, like with variables, like if you did this, that would be like set key to A. We don't want to set it, we want to compare it. So we want to see if the key that's being pressed, and we're going to compare it to, we're going to check to see if it is the letter A. All right, 
if it is the letter A, then in this, this if statement, we're going to say fill blue. Okay, now check it out. I'm going to press A. See how that is? Now watch what happens when I press B. Nothing happens. See? Nothing happens. A, it turns blue because it's checking two things. First to see if a key is pressed, and then it checks to see if that key is A, and then it changes it to blue. And that is how we can get some user interactions going on. And remember, you could put anything in here, right? You could make like, you could change the size, you can make something move right, left, who cares, like whatever. But for now, we're just changing the color. That's the action we want to take. Now let's make a second one. Like ones if we want to have like two different circles, like maybe one circle turns blue if I press A, the second circle turns uh, yellow if I press B. Let's try this out. So let's make another set of this, okay? So underneath here, I'm gonna once again, I'm just gonna say fill. I'm gonna start this off at white. I'll make another ellipse. This one's gonna be at 300, 100, 100, 100, okay? Oops. And so now I want this one to turn yellow if I press the B key. So once again, I say if key is pressed, right? I'm putting it in between the original color and the, the shape, and I put my curly braces. So that's my first if statement. Inside of this if statement, I say if key double equal sign, remember that's the comparison, is equal to B, and then I put another set of curly braces, all right? By the way, a lot of people are forgetting to put the curly braces. They are so essential. Remember, I have a curly brace here. That, that's the first set, and this is my second set. So make sure that you have these curly braces, okay? They're not arbitrary. They're very important. All right, now if I have, if the user presses the key B, here's where we change it to yellow. So we'll say fill yellow. And let's check it out. So if I press A, C turns blue. If I press B, turns yellow, uh, and if I press C, nothing happens. A, B, C, and that's it. So you could have all, you could have as many of these as you want. You could do one for every key on the keyboard. It doesn't matter, but that is how you make things change color by pressing keys. Super cool. All right, that's it for this lesson. Peace out.